Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about honor. Because we'll be getting that honor by trying to recruit heroes and do justice around us. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ascension, a deck building game for two to four players. Uh, today we're going to be doing a rule school. So I'm going to teach you how to set up and play the game rule for rule so that you don't have to read the rule book at all and you can jump and get right to the fun as quick as possible. So without further ado, let's get going. Ascension is a deck building game for two to four players where you're trying to get the most honor throughout the game by playing cards that give you honor directly and by buying cards that will give you honor at the end of the game. Over the course of the game you'll be playing cards which will sometimes get you runes to spend currency to buy other cards. Or maybe you'll be playing cards with power in order to defeat certain monsters. Monsters can give you honor right away when you defeat them and sometimes give you an immediate action as well. When buying Construct cards, you'll be able to reuse abilities on those throughout the game. And some heroes and other cards allow you to gain some runes to spend for currency to buy other cards, and many of these have special abilities as well. And you're often able to buy some of the more basic cards which are more affordable to help get your engine going. And as you buy more powerful cards as you go to draw up, you'll be able to shuffle and get these good cards back into your hand. And it's always exciting to build from your starting cards, which you always start with, into more exciting ones that you build that are different every game. To set up, first go through the deck of cards that came with the game, and you're going to separate out the Apprentice and Militia cards. You're going to give each player eight Apprentice cards and two Militia cards. It's these ones that are, have that white background. Each player will then shuffle that deck face down, then they'll draw five cards from that deck, and they'll be able to look at these but keep them secret from other players. Those will be in your hand. In this case, we're playing with a two-player game, so you'll have plenty of leftover Apprentice and Militia cards. If you're playing with less than four players, you will have some extra cards that say Apprentice and Militia. If you are, take all of these and set them off to the side because you will not need these for the rest of the game. Next, you'll go through the rest of the cards that are in the deck, and you'll find the 29 cards that say Heavy Infantry, the 30 cards that say Mystic, and the one card that says Cultist. You'll take them and put them in piles on the board as shown. And so now your board should look like this. Next, you'll gather the Honor Tokens. These are the red ones that are worth five and the clear ones that are worth one. You'll take a certain amount of these, depending on the amount of players that you see here, and you'll place those in the honor pool. Any extra ones outside of this can be removed from the game and put back in the box because you won't need them. Next, you'll take the rest of the deck, you'll shuffle it up, and then you'll place six cards face up on the board as shown, making sure that you leave the very right space over there that says void empty for now. The object of the game is to have the most honor at the end of the game. And honor is obtained sometimes by cards telling you to gain certain honor. And then cards in the bottom left hand corner will have honor. All cards in your deck at the end will be worth points as well. So you're trying to gain honor over the course of the game and have the most at the end. During the game, each player is going to take their turn, and then it will be the next player's turn in clockwise order, and things will continue to move like that. On your first turn, you'll be drawing the top five cards off your deck. You'll be using those cards to gain runes to purchase other cards, or to defeat monsters, or to use some special abilities. Once that's done, all these cards will go to your discard pile, and you'll be drawing up five cards for your next turn. So let's take a look at this turn. My first turn I drew four apprentices and one militia. These are all the same cards and they're all worth one rune. This is sort of currency that you'll use to purchase other cards. This is power that you'll use to defeat different monsters. So let's take a look at this closely. I have four runes to spend and I have one power to try to use to defeat monsters. Now since I have four runes to spend, we see this one at the top is the cost. So that's four, that's three, and that's one. So with these four, I could buy this one card or I could buy the three and the one, which also equals four. You can always overspend, but you never get change back to carry over to future turns. So let's say I was thinking of buying these with my four runes. Now you'd buy one first, and when you buy a card, you simply place it into your discard pile, and a new card will come up off the top of the deck and refill it, because I might want to change my mind. Maybe if this was another one, I could have bought that instead of this, but it's not. So I'll buy this one for my fourth and final rune, and I place this into my discard pile. And of course, every time a card is bought, it immediately gets replaced by the deck. 
Now I have one card left. It's a Militia with a power of one. There's only two monsters. This one requires six. This one requires two. So I can't really do anything with this this round. So I will place it back into my discard pile with the other cards that I already played. So in addition to the five cards that I played that turn, the two that I bought go in my discard pile. I would then draw five more cards from the top of my deck. If I do not have enough to get to five cards, I would deal all the ones that I have into my hand. Let's say there were just two. I would then shuffle my discard pile and then draw back up so I have a total of five cards in my hand. If you remember, we placed these three cards at the top of the board in these sets. And because these can be used every turn as long as they're available. For example, on your turn, you could spend two runes to get a heavy infantry. You'd add it to your discard pile, but this entire pile has all heavy infantry. Same for Mystic, is it costs three, and it will give you two runes in the future where the heavy infantry will get you two power. Now, these will last here as long as there are cards. If they're all gone, of course, you cannot buy any more. This one is special, the Cultus. It is a monster. We're going to go over monsters in just a moment. Now, normally on your turn, when you play cards, you're playing them just right in front of you. You're not placing them on the board. I'm placing them here for ease of use. Now, let's say on your turn, you want to try to defeat this Earth Tyrant. It needs six. Let's say I had three heavy infantry in my hand, and I played them for a total of six. When you defeat a monster, you immediately get the reward here. This says gain five honor and draw two cards. And this is when you would draw honor from the board and place them in front of you. In this case, we're getting five honor, so it's one red. And then you would draw two cards from your hand immediately, which would allow you to use them this turn. Also, when any time a monster gets defeated, they get banished to the void. Anytime you're here banishing, it's going to place it here in the void. This essentially is a board's discard pile. And don't forget that once a monster is removed, to refill it up in the center of the board from the draw deck. Now back to that cultist, you'll see it needs two power to be defeated, but you don't place this card to the void. It says here that you just keep it there and you can defeat it as many times as you can, getting the reward. Well, let's talk about heroes. There's different factions. In this case, it's a lifebound hero. And when you buy these, they go into your discard pile. But when you play them later, you will do what's on the card. In this case, it says gain two honor. So you would put two honor in front of you from the board and you'd get to draw a card immediately. That's how the heroes work. When purchasing a construct card, it will go directly into your discard pile face up. Then throughout the game, you'll end up shuffling that card. Now, when you play them, these construct cards stay in front of you until they're removed sometimes by monster cards. So if someone defeated this monster, they would get three honor, but then each opponent must destroy a construct card they control. So if somebody else defeated the Corrosive Widow, you would need to get rid of one of these cards. And when they're getting rid of these, it would no longer be in play, but it would just go to your discard pile, meaning it can come out a little bit later once it gets back in your hand and you play it on a turn. Also note that at the bottom right hand corner, the number of dots tells you how many of these exact cards are in the entire deck. Earlier we touched briefly on factions. Here you'll see the different factions for heroes. We have Lifebound, Enlightened, Void, and Mikata. So here some of them depend on what you've already played. This is if you've already played another Lifebound hero this turn, gain two power. So if I had already played this this turn, and then you played this because it's a Lifebound hero, you'd get to gain two. So sometimes cards abilities will cycle off of what happens to have already been played in the faction. When banishing cards, if they're from the center row, you would take those cards and place them in the void on the right. If you're banishing more than one, you can continue to refill these from the center deck. If a card says to banish a card from your discard pile, that's any card that you've played in a previous turn. Because remember, as you play cards, they go in front of you in what's called a played zone. And at the end of your turn, once you've played all your cards, they'll then all move to your discard pile. If you're told to banish a card from your hand, that's any of the cards that you have in your hand this round that you have not yet played. Any cards being banished go directly to the void. This play continues as players taking five cards, playing them, activating them, and then drawing up five more for their next turn until all of the honor tokens for that amount of players has been taken off the board. The game will then end once everyone's had a turn that round so that everyone has an equal amount of turns, which means after the honor pool has been completely dispersed, someone might gain honor. And if they do, they can take honor from the bag that was put back into the box just for this reason. And at the end of the game, you do final scoring, adding up all the honor tokens, one for clear, five for red, and all of the honor in the bottom left of any of your cards. Whoever has the most is the winner. If it's tied, the player later in the turn order wins. 
you can play a team game here. And in this case with four players, your teammate sits across from you diagonally. So it's gonna go team one, team two, team one, team two. You place 30 honor in the honor pool. And if something happens, like if you defeat a monster that says you must destroy a construct from an opponent, they are not considered your opponent. So you would, they would not need to remove that. Also, when you buy a card, you can spend an additional rune to put the card into your teammate's deck instead of yours. But it still goes into their discard pile. And at the end, once all the honor is gone, you add it all up at the end of the round, just like the normal game, whatever team has the most wins. In the solo game, you set aside 50 honor tokens in the pool. On your turn, when you buy a card, instead of refilling it right here like you normally would, all the cards to the left slide to the right, and then you'll refill the very left. At the end of your turn, the two furthest cards to the right will get placed off to the side together, because at the end, all the honor in that pile off to the side of the board will be your opponent's honor. At the end of your turn, you'd then slide these all the way to the right and refill so that it would be your turn with new cards there. If at the end of your turn, it's a monster that the cultist takes your opponent, it goes in the void and they immediately get that reward in honor tokens. And all other effects are ignored. Continue playing as normal until the entire honor pool is gone. And then at the end of that round, you'll compare your score of honor versus your opponent's. If you have more than your opponent, you've won. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Ascension and get to the fun quicker than reading the rules yourself. Now, there are timestamps in the description below me, so if you want to jump to a certain spot, go ahead and do that. Also, there's a link in the description of this video. If you have more questions about the rules, that's the best place to put them because the publisher will be able to see them as well and they'll be able to try to answer them.